Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good couple of times before but this is a style of beer that I've never tried from them. Although I guess I should say it's one that I've never tried that's been brewed at their own brewery. I have had a collaboration beer involving these guys of this style but it's a little bit strange how that's happened because this is probably the most popular beer style that's out there at the moment in the craft beer world but strange things can happen when you're reviewing craft beers for sure. Um, so for this one then, like I say, we are going to go to the northeast of the country. We're going to go to Dice, which is a little bit to the northwest of Aberdeen where I used to study chemistry. And we're going to have a look at another beer from Fierce Beer. So this one is called The Late Shift. It comes in at 5.6% ABV. And this one is a New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA. So um, yeah, really curious to see how this one turns out. This is another beer that I got from my local Tesco for £3.50 so for those of you watching in different places yeah that's about three euros fifty maybe just over four American dollars and for my Swedish viewers it would be you know uh, it would be about yeah 40 kroner something like that, 40 Swedish kroner so um, yeah and um, this one I think should be quite interesting it's got a nice hot build to it like I said this is the first New England IPA that I've had that's been brewed at Fierce Beer and normally when it comes to this brewery um, the New England IPA isn't what I would think of when I think of Fierce Beer to be honest it would be more the big kind of uh, malty beers like the, the Imperial Stouts uh, the Imperial Porters and stuff like this or the Fruity Sours you know that would be what always comes to mind if someone asked me about, uh, about Fierce Beer but these guys are definitely a very capable brewery in my experience and this is my 10th or so review I'm doing involving these guys and um, the only other New England IPA experience I have related to these guys would be a collaboration they did with Amundsen in Oslo in Norway I think it was called like Technicolor Dreamco or something like that it was a big double IPA that one if I remember rightly I reviewed that um, no, maybe at the start of this year, something like that, at the start of 2020, sorry I should say now. But um, yeah, definitely curious to see how this one turns out. Hopefully it's another good beer from Fierce Beer and uh, these guys are one of the Scottish breweries that I would recommend that you, you check out. These guys have got some really really good stuff and I hope that I can continue to review things from these guys quite regularly. This is a brewery that I do miss when I'm away in Sweden. But um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. Nice to have these guys on the channel once again. My third review during this cycle of Scottish beer reviews. But um, yeah, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Fierce Beer before, and you will no doubt see more added to that at some point in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you and that's being added to quite regularly at the moment because I am at home in the motherland and as I say I hope that we start to get more Scottish beers in Sweden. Um, because we are getting quite a few English things at the moment, so I'd love to see more Scottish beers making it over there. But uh, as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Fierce Beer then, on to my brewery notes. So as I've mentioned to you already, Fierce Beer is based in Dice just to the northwest of Aberdeen, quite close to the airport, and they began life as the home brewing experiments of David Grant, who worked for many years in the oil industry. So he'd been home brewing since March of 2013, and after hosting a beer and food pairing dinner in May of 2015, um, he's, you know, this was where his beer received really rave reviews, he decided that he was going to go for it and turn professional and start his own company. So David is joined at the company by Dave McGarry, who also worked in the oil industry for a number of years. But as I've said in other reviews, you know, um, there was a, a, an oil crash, if you like, the price of oil crashed. Um, maybe about 10 years or so ago now, a little bit longer than that. And so um, Dave actually used his redundancy package to put himself on a brewing course at Brew Lab down in Sunderland, which is quite a popular route for a number of craft brewers. Um, but these guys kind of started up more in 2016, and in April of that year, they moved into their brewery in the Kirkhill Industrial Estate in Dice, as I say, to the northwest of Aberdeen. And at the moment, these guys can brew around 800,000 litres of beer per year, and they started canning their beers in early 2018 rather than bottling them, and they've now got their own 
bar on Ship Row in Aberdeen, which is called the Fierce Bar. Um, they do want to move their brewery to a more kind of central location in Aberdeen. I've got an idea of where they might be able to do that. There's a really nice old kind of factory building right in the centre of Aberdeen, so fingers crossed Fearspear could take over that. That would be quite interesting. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to see Fearspear having like a sort of big brew pub, a big American style kind of brew pub thing in the centre of Aberdeen. That would be pretty damn cool. Uh, so fingers crossed they can pull that off. But uh, in May of 2019, they opened a new bar on Rose Street in Edinburgh. And they've also got one in Manchester now as well, I believe. I'm not sure if they have one in Glasgow. I thought there was a fierce bar in Glasgow, actually. Um, but as of January 2020, when I'm reviewing this beer for you, these guys have produced 140 different kinds of beer. And they now also produce different gins as well, actually. So, um, yeah, that's, you know, these guys, very, very interesting brewery. Um, I do hope that at some stage I can get up to DICE and uh, you know film um, a Meet the Brewery interview with these guys. That would be really, really fun because they've always responded quite positively to the videos that I've done over the years and things. So yeah, this is a brewery that I definitely would like to feature on a kind of Meet the Brewery segment at some stage. We need to get that... We need to get a few Scottish breweries uh, on that in addition to the, the Swedish and Estonian ones that we already have. But um, yeah, I think this would be uh, that would be very very nice but yeah um, as I say this is a Scottish brewery that you definitely need to keep an eye on uh, their dark beers are probably the ones that you'll be most likely to find I would think that those would be the ones that are exported quite often so um, yeah these guys are um, these guys are a very very good Scottish brewery but yeah that's all I can really tell you about Fierce Beer for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um, yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then really curious to see what this one has in store for us so there's a little look at the artwork for you, and as I've said in previous reviews as well, Fierce Beer always have, you know, the human body and the different animal heads and things on them, or, you know, like knights, you know, I think the last one I had was like a rhino with a suit of armour or something like that, you know, you always get these crazy kind of pictures, like newspaper uh, animal heads and stuff like that from Fierce Beer. There you can see the kind of the fierce hop head on there which is always quite nice and it says on the side here late shift is a crushable new england ip with low bitterness and a full-on juicy profile with lots of haze hopped with nelson sovine and galaxy so yeah those should be really nice um yeah nelson sovine as we know about 16 percent alpha acid hop from new zealand usually lots of white and green grapey fruity characters from it um galaxy is an australian hop that's usually got quite a pungent passion fruit character to it but a little bit of, you know, like mangoes and uh, pineapple and things in there. I think that comes in about 14% alpha acid, actually. So this is quite a nice Southern Hemisphere hopped beer, although it did say on the website that this beer has a bit of citra and a little bit of azaka in it as well. So, um, yeah, it's quite interesting that. And it, But it was weird. The, the website said citra and azaka in, like, the description, but then on the brew sheet it only had Nelson Sovine and Galaxy. Um, listed on there. So yeah, I'm not sure actually what the deal with that would be. Maybe they've put the wrong text in the, on the website or something like that. So maybe they need to fix it. Maybe they need to fix it. But yeah, um, the Late Shift um, New England IPA. Um, I've got a feeling that this is maybe a special beer that's actually brewed only for Tesco's or something like this. Because I'm sure there is a, a beer that's called the Day Shift, which is, um, which is an IPA. And I think they've also got the... Um, I think they've also got a beer called Night Shift, which is a black IPA. So I think this might be a special one that's brewed for the supermarkets. Um, although, correct me on that if I'm wrong. Some of you guys who are drinking the Fierce Beers a little bit more often than me will probably know that. So let me know about that in the comments section below. So I wonder, is this one that's brewed for the, the supermarkets? But yeah, this was bought in Tesco, like I said. Um, but yeah, 440 milliliter can, this one. New England IPA, 5.6% ABV. Let's get stuck into this guy and see how we go on. It does say on the side here that this one has wheat and oats in it. So this one, I think, should be quite good. At 5.6%, though, you are kind of getting into the almost um, session IPA. Um, territory there but in fairness some of the best beers some of the best IPAs that I've had this year to be honest have been the lower alcohol ones and the other thing I forgot to tell you as well I did write down in the brewery notes about what uh, the malt base of this one is so this one has malty oats Vienna dextrin pilsner and cara 30 malts I just got reminded of that there when I saw the color of this one so um, yeah 
Remember, the thing that decides the colour of your beer is one, the type of malts that you use, and two, the length of the boil. So the longer you boil the beer, and usually for a New England IPA, it's somewhere between like 70 and 90 minutes. But the longer you boil the wort in a beer, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker um, colour out of it. So this one, as you can see, is quite rich in its colour compared to some other New England IPAs. I just washed this glass as well and I'm still getting carbonation stuck to the side of it. It just shows you how sensitive beer actually is. But yeah, as you can see with this beer, if I shine the light through it, this one is actually quite a murky... Um, this one's quite a murky looking New England IPA, this one, quite a rich orangey leaning colour. You can see that when we poured this beer, there was about a half finger of a frothy, I would say, perfect white head on this one. That's just faded away to be quite a thin foamy layer, but it does have a fairly impressive foamy ring just around the edge of the glass. But yeah, definitely quite a rich orangey character coming out of this one. And what I will say is, the level of haze that you're getting out of this for a 5.6 percenter is a bit ridiculous. It is quite impressive. Um, so yeah, if I stick my fingers behind the glass there, you can see that is just crazy. The level of haze that you'll get in these New England IPAs is due to the wheat and the oat content. And you know, it's a bit strange because theoretically, as you go up the alcohol scale into the IPAs, the double IPAs and so on, you should have more oats and wheat um, and the beers should get hazier. But then you get ones like this that are low alcohol and they're just hazy as hell. You know, that is just absolutely crazy the level of haze that you're getting out of this one. I've had triple IPAs that are not as hazy as this. Um, so yeah, I've got a feeling, I wonder if this is going to be a more oat or a more wheat heavy um, New England IPA, but when we taste it, I'm sure we'll be able to tell. But yeah, lovely, quite rich orange colour. This one, if we're comparing this to the fruit juices, as I often do, um, I would say that this beer is like a kind of mixed tropical fruit juice in terms of its colour. But um, yeah, it looks very nice for sure. So, um, yeah, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance, other than the level of haze that it has. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. I'm very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. I think it's going to be pretty damn awesome. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Um, yeah, Southern Hemisphere hops all the way on this one. Um, the Galaxy... And the Nelson Sovian just complement each other really quite nicely. You've got the pungency of the Galaxy in there, and then the slightly kind of softer um, and more oily Nelson Sovian coming out. But we'll come to that a little bit later. I always like to do the fruits last. We'll focus on the malty side of things first. So, um, you can smell on this beer straight away. I think this is going to be quite a wheat, thicky, uh, a wheat heavy. New England IPA. New England IPAs can lean towards different things. They can be oaty, uh, they can be uh, a bit more yeasty, they can be wheaty, and sometimes they can be a little bit more barley malt orientated. It just depends. Um, depends on the brewery and what the brewer likes, usually. Um, but this one for me, I've got a feeling this is going to have quite an oaty presence to it at the, at the same time, but I think the wheat is the one that's maybe going to take the lead in that. You can just kind of smell the thickness of this beer when you... Um, you can just smell the thickness of this beer when you go into the aroma. Um, so yeah, straight away with this one, you can get that typical sort of white bready thing that you're always going to get. But if you take the aroma in quite deeply, you can smell, um, you can definitely smell a bit of the bitiness of the wheat. And it's quite a, you know, at the same time, it just feels, um, it just kind of smells a little bit almost um, gloopy, if you like. But it's not quite as um, sweet almost and not quite as smooth if you like as you would get if it was the oats that were taking the lead usually the oats just give you a big smoothness and a little bit of sweetness this one definitely smells a little bit more kind of thick and almost doughy is not the right word but just a little bit more thick and gloopy and that makes me think that the wheat is going to take the lead in the malt base here um so yeah this beer it really does smell just really thick in the malt base so yeah white bready notes um a little bit of a kind of oaty creamy character i think as well which is very nice um, yeah, lovely oaty smoothiness, a little bit of thicker kind of wheaty notes in there. And if you take the aroma in more deeply, you start to get the wheaty bitiness out of the beer. But there's also a fair little bit of brown sugar in this one, which I think will be coming from the uh, the Vienna malts. Vienna malts have a lovely, you know, McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing, and maybe a little bit like in a straight up caramel, to be honest. So I really like how that. I do like how that. Um, goes together to be honest with you so I like I like I definitely like what this beer has going on for it for sure um so yeah this is a nice nice smelling beer 
Um, yeah, malty side of things. Yeah, smells quite thick, quite wheaty leaning, but you do get a bit more of the oats as your nose kind of adjusts to the aroma here. You can smell the soft white bread underneath and a little bit of the kind of biscuity brown sugary qualities coming out of it as well. So yeah, the malty side of this beer is quite interesting. I'm curious to see what it actually comes across like in the uh, in the flavour profile. But yeah, on to the hoppy side of things then. Um, on the green side of the hops, there is a teeny little bit of earthiness to this one. You're always going to get just a little bit of it. But the green side of the beer for me is quite... Um, when you sugar the beer up, you start to get a little bit more of a floral character out of it. You do start to get a nice little bit of floral aromaticity on this one. Um, um, we do, yeah, you do get a nice little bit of floral aromaticity on this one. And then, um, the more that you smell of it, I think the floral aromaticity lingers there, but there is a slightly softer, grassy component as well. But remember, I think it is, this beer is going to lean towards that kind of floral side of things. I mean, you've got two hops in there that are, um, I think, you know, Nelson Sovian's about 16% alpha acid, and Galaxy, if I remember rightly, is about 14 So it's not surprising you've got a big floral component here, but remember... With New England IPAs, the majority of the hops are added later in the boil, and that means that they give you less of a bitter component than uh, they do a fruity component. You know, it's all about when in the boil you add the hops. Early on gives you the bitterness, later gives you the um, the flavour and uh, aroma profile of the hop more than anything. So Nelson Sovian uh, can have a hell of a spiciness, but not a lot of people uh, know that about this hop because usually it's a late addition hop. Um, but if you add it early, big spiciness out of it for sure. Um, but yeah, on the fruity side of things then, um, if you know these two hops, this beer's kind of giving you what you'd expect. You've got a nice little bit of, uh, you do get a bit of that pungent passion fruit out of this one. You are getting some nice juicy mangoes and a few softer tropical notes in there as well. You're getting a bit of that kind of almost trademark pineapple that you'll get from Galaxy. There's maybe a few like apricotty kind of notes underneath there as well, but you get that big oily, white green grapey almost gooseberry like character from it uh, from Nelson Sovian. I love Nelson Sovian hops. There's a very interesting hop from Australia as well called Enigma which is like Nelson Sovian but just with a little bit of a red fruity component to it. Hallertau Blanc is another one from uh, Germany that's quite similar um, to uh, to Nelson Sovian but lower alpha acid about 11% if I remember rightly. Um, but yeah if you like those kind of green white grapey things as I do um, then those are two other hops that you should definitely check out but yeah the aroma of this beer is absolutely lovely and it's making me quite thirsty so yeah take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of this one as you say the fruits come across as quite oily overall I would say in the aroma of this one I think the Nelson Sovian starts to come out the more that you um that you smell this one so yeah take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get stuck in but we are going to taste this one this one is the late shift a New England hazy IPA, very hazy IPA I would say, um, or whatever, you know, New England hazy IPA, whatever you want to call it, coming in at 5.6% ABV from Fierce Beer in Dice, just up then, uh, just up to the northwest of Aberdeen. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Oh yeah. That's pretty damn solid, absolutely. Um, yeah, like I say, this is my first time trying um, a New England uh, that's been brewed at Fierce Beer. Um, and it certainly doesn't let you down. It certainly does not let you down. Um, it's actually quite a little bit more kind of crisp and drinkable, if that makes sense, compared to what you might, you know, this style is, generally speaking, but this one actually has a little bit more kind of crispness to it than you might expect just from the look of it, just because of the haze. But um, it's a very nicely done beer. So thumbs up to Fierce Beer for this one. Um, quite a crisp, easy drinking one. But at 5.6%, you would kind of expect that. But yeah. Really, really nice stuff from Fierce, and I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I do want to try and review the day shift and the night shift on the channel at some point. I'm pretty sure it was the night shift that I tried with my friend uh, Thomas over at uh, Thomas Open Reviews in the Netherlands. I think it was the night shift we had, and that was a very, very nice beer. So I want, I'd like to do my own review of that as well, actually, and, and have it again because if, if it is the same one that I had with Thomas, that was a really nice beer, actually. Um, so yeah, we did that because, you know, we wanted, it was nice to review a Scottish beer together, actually. So, yeah. 
that was pretty awesome. But um, I can't remember if that's on his channel or my channel, come to think of it. I think it's on his channel. But um, yeah, it is, um, it is pretty da It's The beers that I've had from these guys are good. But yeah, Day Shift and Night Shift are two that I would like to try. Um, so yeah, let's um, break down flavour profile this one then but it does get a big thumbs up from me this beer I think this is very good um, so yeah in terms of the um, in terms of the malty side of things then straight away with this beer you can feel that nice kind of pale malty white bready sort of thing just blanketing the middle of your palate there I don't I think this beer it didn't say on the website if it had um, you know pale malts and things in it but um, I definitely had other ones, but yeah, you can feel that nice sort of pale, malty, white, bready sort of thing. That blankets the middle of your tongue. In the middle third of your palate, it, it, it almost has a little bit of kind of crispness to it and just a little touch of uh, graininess there. But as you go on to the back third of your palate, you can definitely feel the beer thickening up a little bit. And that's the wheat. That's definitely the wheat uh, coming out of this one. Absolutely. So you can feel on that back third of your palate, the beer is slightly thicker. There's a nice smoothness to it and it's just got a little bit of a kind of bitiness um, to it as well which I think is um, is really quite nice so yeah it's interesting how that it's definitely interesting how that goes together for sure um, but yeah I think the further you go into the aftertaste the beer does get a little bit grainier in the middle of the palate and then a little bit bitier um, on the wheaty side of things so yeah interesting malt base to this beer for sure yeah um, in the middle of your palate, um, you can feel that the beer in the beginning, when you take it in, it comes off as quite crisp in the middle third of your palate, but um, you can feel that it gradually sort of mellows out almost. You start to get more of the oaty um, kind of sweetness out of this one. The oats just kind of... The, the, uh, this beer, is, as I was suspected it would be, is fairly wheat heavy. I think it is leaning towards the wheat um, side of things. You do get a little bit of the smoothness of the oats there as you go further into the aftertaste. You can kind of feel the oats just pushing their way out gradually in the middle of your palate, which is interesting. So yeah, I like how that goes together. But in the very centre of your tongue, you get a little bit of a... Um, you do get a little bit of a kind of biscuity um, sort of there's a wee bit of a slight caramel from the Vienna malt, but then you get the biscuity notes as you move further towards the edge of the palate in the beer. I think the the dextrin, uh, the dextrin dextrose, I forget which one it is, um, the dextrin dextrose malts that are coming out of this beer, um, you, you do get a little bit of that, and I think they are sort of um, just playing about with the smoothness a little bit. I think they are kind of contributing to the smoothness a little bit, and that's usually what they're used for, is just smoothening out beers. Um, a little bit, um, but yeah, you, th this beer, it actually strikes me as like, you know, sort of a quite old school malt base, if that makes sense, and the, the point of reference for me would be the OO Narangi in, um, from Gothenburg, or the, the GBG Beer Week beer 2016, or the um, the Amazing Haze from Stiegbergs, you know, those were the, the, the first Swedish New England IPAs that I had... Um, that I tried those, if I remember rightly, were my kind of introduction to the, the hazy IPA style, to be honest with you. And this, the malt base that comes out of this one does remind me of those quite a bit. This is a more really bready leaning and and um, almost, it does have quite a bit of a barley malt presence here. So like I say, the wheat in this beer has quite a presence too, but the barley malt's in there at the same time. The oats, I think, are taking a bit of a back seat. So this one isn't the, the sort of creamiest of New England's that you're going to come across. It's definitely got a bit of smoothness to it and um, yeah, a little sort of kind of crispness, if you like. So um, yeah, the way everything goes together in this one, I think, is, is quite nice. It's at 5.6% though, you would kind of expect that. Um, you would think it would be, if you're wanting something a bit kind of smoother and thicker almost, it probably would be about six and a half, seven percent you'd be looking for from this kind of beer. So I'm not surprised at this one. It's a little bit more kind of crisp and barley malt orientated, but uh, the beers that I've enjoyed um, probably the beers I've enjoyed most in the, the hazy IPAs have been the lower alcohol ones this year and this one kind of fits into that category so this one isn't too far away from being like a session um, New England IPA so yeah this is interesting from that perspective but definitely a, a, a barley malt orientated and wheat leaning sort of uh, New England IPA I think that's what we could say about this one to sum it up nicely but you do get a wee touch of brown sugary note in the middle of your palate there with this one but it's quite crisp and bready I think that's probably the 
the um, that probably summarises the malt base quite well for me, to be honest with you. Bread, quite you know, white bready leaning, um, with a you know, with a sort of wheat thickness and a wheat thickness and wheat bitiness on the back of the palate. So yeah. But yeah, I like how that um, that goes together for sure. Um, yeah, that's the malt base covered. You maybe get one or two little woody notes coming out of it the further you go into the aftertaste, just little subtleties from the yeast or whatever. But yeah, um, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, there is a nice little bit of, uh, there is a little touch of earthiness to this beer. As you move further forward, it's got a nice little bit of, um, there is a wee touch of herbal quality there, but as you reach the front corners of the palate, it does have a very nice kind of um, floral um, aromaticity. Uh, which I think suits it quite well. It just gives the beer that wee touch of bitterness, but this is not one of the most bitter, um, hazy New Englands that you're going to come across, but we'll come to that later. Round the front curve of the palate, it's distinctly lighter and more grassy. The floral notes on this one, I would say, are more aromatic than they are, like spicy or resinous or whatever. It's just quite... Um, it is quite well balanced in that regard. But on the front third of your palate, that's where you get that nice juicy bubble where the... Um, that's where you get the nice juicy bubble and those fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. And this one is kind of what you would expect, but the, the fruits are a little bit softer than I was expecting. Um, so yeah, as you go on that front third of your palate, at the back you get those more pungent tropical notes from the uh, from the uh, the galaxy in this one. Um, um, so yeah, so you do have a nice little bit uh, you do get a nice little bit of a pungent um, passion fruity note there, but as you move further forward, it quite quickly becomes softer and softer, and then you get a wee bit more, you get a wee bit of an almost kind of, I want to say apricot, it's that soft apricot papaya type thing as you move further forward, but then on top of that, you've got a bit of pineapple, to be honest with you, but on the front half of that front third of your tongue, it's the more oily, white, green, grapey sort of things from the um, from the Nelson Sovine that uh, that are coming out on this one so um yeah i like how um i do like how this goes together from that perspective so um yeah it, it's got a nice little bit of oily fruit to it but it's got the soft kind of tropical things that you would want as well actually but yeah this this is very much like a kind of session ipa to be honest with you it is like a 5.6 percent yes maybe technically it's not a session ipa but um it's no far away from that. It's a very easy drinking beer, this one. So it gets a thumbs up from me. I think it's on the flavour profile. It's kind of got everything you want, like a Southern Hemisphere um, IPA, this one for sure. But I like the, the kind of mix of the slightly more pungent um, tropical fruits, the slightly soft ones, and then the more oily, white, green, grapey sort of thing from the Nelson Soviet. And I think the beer does start to lean towards that oily, white, green, grapey, gooseberry type flavour the further you go into the aftertaste. But yeah, it gets a thumbs up from me. I certainly like how this how this goes together for sure. Um, so yeah, I think that covers the flavour profile of this one quite nicely. I mean, round the front edge of the, the tongue, it does have a very soft kind of grassiness and that again suits what the Nelson Sovine is bringing into the mix. So um, yeah, mouthfeel wise to round off the review, Um, yeah, I'd say this one's kind of at the bottom end of mid-bodied. Carbonation's fairly smooth. It feels, again, as you often get with Scottish beers, it feels very, very clean. You know, we're always proud of our tap water in Scotland. It's, it's, it's a source of national pride, that, absolutely. Everyone's like, Scotland has the best tap water. And uh, you can really feel that in Scottish beers, the kind of cleanliness of the water, for sure. Um, but yeah, this one is um, is really nice. Uh, in that sense. Um, yeah, so nice kind of clean mouthfeel. Little, that helps add to the kind of crisp vibe that this beer has and carbonation is fairly light for sure. But yeah, um, some really nice um, hoppy notes to this one. This is not the most bitter beer you're going to come across. This must only be like 20, 25 IBUs, something like that. Um, yeah, 20, 25 IBUs and even that seems a little bit generous to be honest, but it does get a wee bit of bitterness on the sides of the palate for sure. Malt base, like I say, is quite crisp, it builds a wee bit of graininess and smoothness the further you go into it, and then the fruits, um, they're quite soft and juicy, but there's a little bit of oily character in there as well. But I mean, overall, this is a really, really quite nice beer, this one, for a session IPA, um, it really, it makes for a good supermarket craft beer, this one, there's some really good supermarket beers um, uh, out there at the moment, you know, the Vocation, um, 
is it Life and Death or Love and Hate? I forget. There's two in there that have quite similar names. I think it's. I forget exactly which one it is. But I, um, I also reviewed the the Kingslayer and stuff like that, which is a stronger one from Buxton Brewery. You know, this one I think for a session IPA fits in really nicely to what um, to what you know they want to do in Tesco's actually it's a really good supermarket beer this one I would say definitely one of the lighter and more drinkable ones I, I guess I would say from what they had in the Tesco's there I'm not sure if this beer does go down into England as well in the supermarkets but certainly this is one that is fairly readily available in Tesco stores in Scotland and um, yeah it does the job it absolutely does the job and it's nicely crafted uh, and you can't ask for much more than that these days there's so many New England hazies on the market that's all you can ask for is a well done beer and Fierce have delivered in that regard so yeah I think that's a nice way to kind of round off this review. I need to try some more New England IPAs from these guys because uh, I, I doubt that this one is the craziest one that they do. I would guess that there are some other ones out there that are really kind of more mind-blowing if you like but it's well done and you can, as I say, for a supermarket beer that's what you want. That is exactly what you want. So hopefully fairly soon I could review the night shift and the day shift. That's definitely something I want to get done on the channel soon. Maybe in February or September we can organise that, but um, yeah, I will try and film an out and about video at the Fierce Bar in Aberdeen, and if we can get these guys on for a uh, Meet the Brewery segment as well, that would be um, really cool actually, so we'll see about doing that at some point in the, the fairly near future, but yeah, nice to return to Fierce Beer once again, this one was the Late Shift, a 5.6% New England Hazy, whatever you want to call the IPA, from Fierce Beer in Dice in Aberdeenshire in Scotland, awesome to have these guys again, I hope you guys enjoyed my take on this Beer, so have a go at this one if you get the chance. Until the next time, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Fierce Beer as well. And we will return to these guys the next time I'm home in Scotland for sure. Slange it, skull, cheers. Make sure you have a go at this one. Really nice, kind of just drinkable. Almost session-like IPA this. Slange it, skull, cheers. <laughs>